So in the previous video, we talked about the first three steps of DNA replication. That is activation of DNA nucleotides, which takes place with the help of phosphorylase. Then separation or opening up of the helix with the help of helicase. Stabilization of those two separated strands with the help of topoisomerase and single strand stabilizing proteins. And we also saw primer formation. Now we are on step number four, where the actual DNA strand is going to be synthesized. So here we are actually talking about the DNA replication step. Now just to draw the previous structure, we made the replication fork where the two DNA strands open up and we see a fork like structure. This strand has its third carbon free at one end, fifth carbon at the other and as these strands are anti-parallel, the other strand would have five, fifth carbon that is five prime here and three prime here. We also saw that the primer is formed at the third end of the parent strand and we also discussed the reason for it. The reason was this end will be the fifth carbon, this end will be third and here there is going to be the functional group. So new nucleotide is going to come here. Same way on the other strand, the RNA primer is formed at the third end of the opened up parent strand. If we take only this much part, then here is the third end. So when the primer comes, it has fifth end here, third here and its functional group here. This is what we have already discussed. Now, on this opened up fork in front of the primer, with the help of DNA polymerase, the DNA nucleotides will get added up. Let us talk about this strand now. That is parent strand 3 prime 5 prime. So if we are talking of parent strand 3 prime 5 prime, what is happening here? The primer is in front of the third. In front of this OH will come the DNA nucleotide. DNA nucleotide will have its fifth carbon here. So there a phosphodiester bond will be formed. And here also the hydrogen bond which the complementary or the corresponding nitrogen base. The next nucleotide comes here, the next one here, the next one here. That means the strand is growing towards the third carbon. That means the new strand which is formed is starting from fifth prime and growing towards the third. So if we talk of the new strand, it is from five prime towards three prime. This arrow tells us in which direction the strand is growing. And in parent strand, we have not drawn the arrow because we're just trying to say, tell the polarity. Let us come to this strand now. Here is the OH. So in front of OH is going to be the DNA nucleotide and it will make the same phosphodiester bond here. Again, an OH is going to be free here. The next nucleotide comes here. The next one comes here. That means this strand, the new DNA strand is growing again from its fifth carbon towards its third carbon. So we said that this is a rule, the new DNA strand or RNA for that matter always grows from fifth carbon towards three carbon. So the direction is always going to be like this. But in this case, in next situation, we will see a slightly different thing. This much part, which was the opened up part, the new DNA strands have formed on both the strands simultaneously. And this is because of the DNA polymerase. We said that these D, this DNA polymerase, it is going to attach here on this whole opened up fork and it is going to replicate both the strands simultaneously. And that is why it is also known as a dimer. This fork opens up a little more. So now the opened up fork looks like this because the opened up part is even more. Let us replicate this thing here, whatever has happened so far and then we'll see 
how it moves ahead. Third prime here, five prime, three and five. In the first case, that means this parent stand three dash five dash. This was the primer which was formed and the fifth L and then there were DNA nucleotides which were added to form the and we made one, two, three, four nucleotides. So we're going to stop, stop at four and we'll see what happens after this. This is the third end of the newly synthesized DNA. This was the third end and the strand which is the other one that is five dash three dash polarity parent strand in the opened up part here was the primer and attached to the primer were one two three four five we made here so let us make this actually the number has to remain the same so let us keep this as four so that there is no confusion here so four nucleotides here four nucleotides here but let us put the numbers this is going to be the third end this is the fifth now little more part of the dna is open what is going to happen here the third carbon is free that means the functional group oh is available so new nucleotides will keep coming here as the functional group is available for formation of the phosphodiester bond in this case this new DNA uh, chain which is formed is going to terminate here because there is no corresponding DNA in front of it. This is the new DNA strand open. Let us talk about only this much piece of DNA which has opened up. This is the fifth end, this is the third end and we said the primer is always formed towards the third. That means this is going to be the fifth end of the primer and the third end of the primer third end is going to have the functional group that is OH. That means new nucleotide can make the phosphodiester bond with this OH. Again, let us draw the direction in which these strands are growing. This one. In this segment, it grew like from fifth to third. Again, this is the fifth end. This is the third end. Again, it is growing towards its, th its third end. So this is the third end of the DNA nucleotide. Let us talk about this. In the first part, it grew from fifth to its third end. In the next one, again it grew from this fifth to its third end. That means new DNA strand as we have said and understood that it always grows from the fifth towards the third. Now this strand opens up further. That means both the strands get separated completely. This is now the two strands separated. What is going to happen on this parent strand which is 3 prime 5 prime? There is only one primer which is formed and this end of the primer was fifth. This was the third. This is fifth. And as all the time the DNA nucleotide were coming on the third end this strand keeps growing without any interruption and it will come to the end of this. This much is understood. This was the fifth prime. This is going to be the third prime. The two strands are again anti-parallel, the parent strand and the new strand. In this case, that is this one. The first primer was formed here. The second primer was formed here and the third will be formed here. And the DNA nucleotide is formed in the form of these pieces. Direction is same from 5 prime towards 3 prime. This parent strand is the fifth end. This is third. This is going to be the fifth. It grows towards its third. It's third. It's third. And this is the third prime. So, this is how the two strands are formed. But now, this strand is formed in a continuous manner. And that is why we will call this strand, newly synthesized DNA strand, as a continuous strand. And the other one is still not a 
full DNA strand. It is still in the form of those pieces. This piece of DNA is known as Oka Zaki fragment. And then these primers are to be removed. That is going to be our next step. So we let us write down step number five. That is removal of the primer. The primer is going to be removed by DNA polymerase one. It is going to remove these primers and replace those primers with the help of new DNA nucleotides. So now this strand is going to be formed first and then after removal of these primers, these gaps will be filled up by new DNA nucleotides. So suppose if we replace these new DNA nucleotides, then how is it going to appear? Let us fill this gap. These are going to be DNA nucleotides. Primer, that is RNA nucleotides, are replaced by DNA nucleotides. So this strand will again be synthesized, but it will be formed later on. So the other strand, that means this strand, but it is formed in a discontinuous manner. And that is why it is known as a discontinuous strand. And if we talk in terms of which is going to be formed first, obviously this new strand will be formed first because it is developing or growing in a continuous manner. And that is why this continuous strand is also known as leading strand. And as the other strand that is discontinuous strand will be formed a little later, as these Okazaki fragments will be sealed or the primer will be removed, new DNA nucleotides will come with the help of ligase, then all these pieces will be connected. So the discontinuous strand will be formed later on. And that is why there is another term given for this uh, discontinuous strand is lagging strand. So one strand is leading, other strand is lagging strand. The questions which are invariably asked on these things are like, on which parent strand will the leading strand be formed and on which parent strand will the lagging strand be formed? We'll take that in a minute. So removal of primer takes place and then with the help of DNA polymerase 1, it removes the primer, replaces it with the normal DNA nucleotides. The next step, sixth step is proofreading. If anything has gone wrong because of wrong nucleotides coming in its place or due to mutations like TT dimer formation, then there is proof reading. And followed by proof reading, there would be repair also. That means if a wrong nucleotide is identified, then it should be first read that this is wrong, so that will be the proofreading part and then it has to be replaced by the correct nucleotide. This part is done by the epsilon unit of DNA polymerase 1 and nuclease. In the list of enzymes which we wrote in the beginning of this particular topic, we have written that DNA polymerase 1 has three subunits and the epsilon subunit is responsible for this proofreading part and again another enzyme that is nuclease. Now let us come back to this and understand which parent strand is responsible for formation of leading and lagging strand. We have two parent strands as we can see in this diagram. One parent strand is 3 prime. 5 prime. That means we are talking about this strand, the first one. The new strand which is synthesized is starting from this point, that is primer will come here. That means this end is going to be the fifth one and it grows towards third. So this is the one which is going to be synthesized in a continuous manner as it is always having its third carbon free. So on this parent strand, that is 3 prime, 5 prime parent strand, we will have leading 
or continuous strand. This is situation one. Situation two is our other parent strand. That is five prime, three prime. And as we can see that primer is going to come at the third end. And that means the strand will be formed in this particular piece only. But the thing that we have to remember is the new strand will be synthesized like this only. The direction is going to be like this. That means it will be towards its third end. Starting from fifth towards third. But because this is only going to happen in a piece, this will produce the lagging strand or discontinuous strand. So on parent strand 3 dash 5 dash, we will get leading strand. And on parent strand, 5 dash 3 dash we will get lagging strand direction in which the leading and the lagging strands are synthesized is same it is always from 5 prime towards 3 prime we can see here we have made the arrow in this direction that means it is growing towards the third here also it is growing towards the third the only difference is on this parent strand the new dna can be synthesized in a continuous manner as and on the other strand because of piece only a piece of the dna opens up that is why the dna new dna is synthesized in the form of small fragments which are known as okazaki fragments so this is how the dna replicates that means the newly formed dna double stranded structure has one strand which is of the parent and other strand which is the new strand and this type of replication is known as semi-conservative replication. In the next video, we will talk about the DNA replication which is semi-conservative actually. So, steps which are involved in DNA replication, the first thing is the nucleotides must get activated by phosphorylation. All monophosphates will be turned into triphosphates. Second step is opening up of the helix with the help of enzymes so that the coil opens up and we have two stable strands on which the DNA can be synthesized. Step number three was formation of the primer because primer helps in attachment of DNA nucleotides to DNA nucleotides. Step number four is actually DNA replication with the help of DNA polymerase three. Then removal of the primer and filling up of the gaps. And the last step is proofreading. So now we have two DNA strands or two DNA molecules synthesized by a semi-conservative mode. We will talk about three scientists here and their contribution in this uh, DNA replication and one more in RNA replication. As we are discussing DNA replication, let us talk about three scientists and their contribution. Dr. Hargobind Singh Khurana synthesized DNA in vitro, in vitro synthesis of DNA without template. template is that piece of DNA on which the new DNA can be synthesized. Another scientist, Kohnberg, did the same thing that is in vitro synthesis but it was with template. So in vitro synthesis of DNA with template. And one more scientist who did or the same experiment for RNA was Okwa, Oka or Ocha, whatever uh, the pronunciation can be, in vitro synthesis of RNA. In vitro synthesis of RNA. So because we are talking of DNA replication, these three are again important. These two are associated with DNA replication and this is RNA. Dr. Khurana got Nobel Prize for this uh, uh, synthesis 
and he, it was without template. Kornberg did the same thing using a template and this was with the RNA synthesis. So now we are done with the entire process of DNA replication. In the next video, we'll talk about the semi-conservative mode of replication of DNA and the experiment which was done by Nesselson and